War Tractor, Don't Mess With Farmers, John Deere A1 and A2 by Fat Electrician. Today we're talking about the coolest military vehicle you've probably never even heard of. Ladies and gentlemen, the John Deere War Tractor. The what? But first, a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Anchor Gold, an online subscription service that allows you to invest in real, tangible gold for as little as $30 a month. I'm not allowed to give you investing advice. I'm just saying that for me, I don't like cash because the government can print $8 trillion more dollars of it whenever they feel like it, and I can't Scrooge McDuck Bitcoin, so my options were limited. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I'll have them linked in the description down below if you're interested. Back to the video. Okay, so here's the story. I want to say, first off, really quick ad read. Loved it. Excellent. We're going back in time here to older fat electrician. Second, I do love that he said, I can't give you investment advice. Do you know how many people on YouTube will just flat out say, buy my, buy my crap coin, buy my Bitcoin, buy my thing, right? And give you financial advice without having the financial advisor paperwork done? Actually something that pisses me off. So I appreciate that. And yeah, no, this was great. This is a solid ad read, like solid nine out of 10. 1940, the great grandson of John Deere himself would approach Ooh. the U.S. government with his idea to make a war tractor. That being a relatively cheap, easily mass producible tank alternative that John Deere could start making right away. And this monstrosity is what they came up with. It, it is literally a John Deere Model A, probably the most recognizable and iconic tractor of all time. Right. And they up armored it and slapped two 30 yeah. caliber turrets on each side. This is why I love American companies during wartime and like World War II. Every company, doesn't matter what they did, they're like, yeah, yeah, I can make this some is, weapons, yeah. no problem. Planting regular seeds, freedom seeds. Either way, we're just putting shit in the ground. It's all the same thing, right? Lead I farmer. think the farmer's insurance jingle was way cooler in the 1940s. I can hear it now. We are farmers. <laughs> all right, so if the war tractor is so awesome, how come you've never actually heard of it before? Well, the military tested three different variations, and by the end of the testing, they decided that there's nothing that this tractor can do that a tank can't do better, so they scrapped the whole project. Right. And this is one okay. of the biggest tactical errors the U.S. military has ever made. For uh -huh. one, tanks cost significantly more. And for two, there's a significantly higher barrier to entry. And what I mean by that is, nobody's joining the military already knowing how to work on and drive a tank. No. There is a fuck ton of people that join the military already knowing how to drive a tractor yeah. and work on tractors because Actually. they've been doing it since they were seven. Okay, yeah. what I'm trying to tell you is Uncle Sam missed out on a golden opportunity to intentionally weaponize farm boys. Okay, yeah. I am not a farmer, but I do live in Iowa, so I grew up in a farm community, and I literally married the farmer's daughter. And let me tell you, if there's anything even remotely close to the E4 mafia in the civilian world, it is a bunch of farmers. They have the same yeah, exact actually. MO. Hold they up. want to get all their work done so they can go drink and have fun. Or as the <laughs> farmers call it, chores. So yeah. if the entire front line is full of a bunch of farm kids with tractors oh, covered no. in machine guns and you're a bad guy the last thing you want to do is be considered the chores because you're about to get done up quick not only yeah. that but the level of fuckery they get into it is it's impressive because I'm telling you right now, farmers know how to strategically transfer equipment to an alternate location. And if you don't believe me, make friends with a farmer and have him show you around, go inside of his barn. There's something in there that they have acquired over the years. Uh -huh. You go help a farmer with chores one night and then you have a beer afterwards and go out in the barn and bullshit. You'll be like, why is there a 1980s <laughs> cop car in here? Oh, that that old thing? Yeah, my dad stole that when he was in high school. Uh, fucking excuse me? Your, your dad, the guy that's at church right now because it's Wednesday and he goes to church three days a week, stole a cop car. Yeah, he was a little bit of a troublemaker when he was a kid. Okay. And the best part about this whole thing- Oh my god, this is- Oh, this is this is beautiful. Not that the E4 Mafia exists, obviously. No, the E4 Mafia does not exist. Never in any capacity would the E4 Mafia exist. That is a uh, <laughs> lies and slander, all of that. <laughs> I'm just like, no, that this tracks. I uh I, I moved to Idaho back in 2004, so I was not originally from Idaho. The moment you say that you are a uh, uh Californian, <laughs> people are gonna look at you and go, hmm. I don't know about that, son. No, I came back before everyone else moved here. 2004, I was like 10. But uh, God, man, it uh, it used to be a, a completely different place. We used to have a lot more rural things, a lot more farm fields. It's it's so industrialized, and it is such a city where I'm at now. It blows my mind. I mean, we're uh looking looking over like a box store down there, or the house over there that has the dog that complain that keeps barking and annoying me. I mean, I remember when that was just foundation. I was playing in that foundation when I was a kid. Like God, oh oh, thank you for reminding me that I really miss like rural farm area. Oh man, that's a flashback. Yeah, no, farmers are built different. No, I will. I will never get in a tip of the farmer. I know. I've gone on record that uh, <laughs> a marine, an engineer, 
and a redneck are the three people that I'd ask if I need something done. A farmer is a very close fourth, to be fair. Thing is you don't even have to take my word on it. We have current events to show us. I mean, have you seen what's going on in Ukraine lately? Ten, they just work. That they just work. And that's just the metric version doing it with a regular tractor. Imagine what the Americans would be doing with war tractors. Yeah. In conclusion, not mass producing the John Deere war tractor is one of the greatest tactical errors America has ever made. Yeah. Don't mess with farmers. Thanks for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch at thefatelectrician.com. Quack bang out. No, I 100% agree with that. I think that's a logistical L right there. Oh my God. Everything he said just spitting facts. It's interesting to have a fat electrician video not be a half hour, though. I will say that. That's a little strange to me now, because I go into this and I'm like, oh, this is going to be an amazing 40-minute session. Not, not even reacting, right? But just 40 minutes of just, oh, yes. Come on. Come on, fat electrician. Tell me the things, right? No, this is super cool. And I do think that the barrier to entry thing really makes sense, though, because, like, you could either throw somebody in that doesn't know how a tank works, or you could start them out, hear me out, Start them out on the tractor that they may be familiar with that has a, you know, if it breaks, it's easier to repair, right? There's a number of reasons you could do it. Even if you don't mass produce it, say like an Abrams or something like that, right? Or other tanks, you could still have them produced in a way that it's just, it's, it's easier to throw off the people that are just wanting to get started or that are needing to get started and educated on this, right? I think that that'd be super cool, actually. And even then, seeing the modern <laughs> seeing the modern strategic and tactical uh, acquirement of, of property, namely a tank via farm equipment. Oh my god, though. Like, no, like I, I agree with chat. I want 20 of these. The, these are absolutely banger. I think that this is a huge logistical L. And that's the thing is how much more how much more expensive would this have been to maintain? How much more expensive has been to repair? How much, you know, how much would this really impact the budget, right? And I think these are things that you really have to kind of take into consideration with something like this. Like farmers are just like you think about what they do, right? Just built different. And, and as I said earlier, I really do miss my local area being a rural farming community i really do it's so industrial it's so just urban now and i'm just like sure don't get me wrong like there's cool things like shields near me i'm not gonna say that shields ain't cool right it has its perks and benefits right i got my choice of like three different sandwich places yes sandwich s-a-m-m-i-c-h fight me <laughs> but like oh it is so different and then you think about this, like how really crapped on farmers get right where, you know, people get pissed off at them because they're moving their tractor over the road. And because they're moving it over the road, it's one of those things that they get upset about. Oh, they're slowing down or they're slow. And it's like, bro, they're moving the fastest they can. They're getting their job done and they're about to go. <laughs> they're about to go have fun. Like I imagine farmers parties, farmers get together. Ooh, go, ooh. I imagine there's a lot of alcohol, a lot of strong alcohol, and a lot of things that get said there. Like, God, that is amazing. But I've ranted on this for a hot minute. If you have not seen The Fat Electrician before, definitely do yourself a favor and go check him out. Fat Electrician is someone who I've reacted to for quite some time. I've interacted with him on a couple of occasions in regards to email and comment section. Overall, just absolutely amazing, dude. I want to send as many people over to him as I can. Hopefully some people that are a little, you know, little averse, little shy of my longer videos, especially longer reactions to his content, look at this and go, wow, man, this guy was really direct in what he did. He didn't bore me to with two minutes with an ad read. He's not talking like this Kip guy is right now excessively. <laughs> But there's your self-referential humor right there. But you get what I'm saying, right? Definitely go check him out. I've been waiting for the day that he surpassed 1 million subs, and I'm so glad he's over a million subs right now. I know he's got that 2 to 3 mil in him. I know he can do it, and I'm very interested to see how he continues his ascent on YouTube. It, it's been an absolute pleasure to watch the man, absolute pleasure to react to the man. So if there's one thing you take away from this, Go check out his other content. Go check out his channel. Go check him out. His other channel as well, The Fat Files, which you will see linked down below. I have gone the extra mile, actually, and uh, I've started linking in every Fat Electrician video I have. I might have to go back, actually, uh, through some of the older ones. It's just started adding The Fat Files in there just, uh, you know, because I want to wink, wink, get that channel up as well. I do love his rants over on The Fat Files. Do yourself a favor. Go check him out. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I do definitely appreciate this. I appreciate all of you coming out and I'll see you all in the next one.